Hey, what's going on, guys? This is your boy C. Will back to you with another video. Super excited here today. Why? Because we are answering your question, your question only. What size power supply do you need? Yes, I know. Something that people have been wondering about every time they get ready to do a bill or you get ready to upgrade something. What should you get? We're going to answer that question. So if this is your first time here, welcome. Here we do everything tech, all things tech, whatever it is, we like to do it. And if you are a returning viewer, I appreciate you the most because you keep everything going. And man, let me tell you something. If you want to see more content like this, make sure that you hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. Let's get going. So man, let me tell you something. As you can see here, this is the thermal take, 600 watts, 80 plus. I think it's just the 80 plus. It's the, the, little, the little white 80 plus. I don't know if you can see that. 80 plus. And then we have uh, the Seasonic. Um, this is the GX 850, 850 watts. This is 80 plus gold. You see that here. And today we are going to answer your question about which size power supply should you get? And I am going to put this in layman terms. And the reason why I said this is because all over the internet, things can get like really into the weeds. So you can either go real deep in, you know, saying on the nerdy side, real tech side, which I like that type of stuff, or you could keep it simple. And I think a lot of people, when it comes to it's like, this is like needs to be the least of your words, right? So first thing that we're going to do is um, I'm going to help you out. So we're going to take a look at PC Part Picker. And I know you've seen me go here before. If you haven't, then here we are again. Um, so I've already done the, the, the dirty work. <laughs> and so the example that I'm going to show you today is of my own system. Um, and this is important because I am going to show you a bunch of different things to show you what you need to know, what needs to be tested, and how you could be able to make a decision for yourself. So the first thing that you need to do, if you are doing a bill for the very first time, or maybe you just want to go back and look to see, maybe you felt like you didn't choose the right bill. Uh, for your current system. Um, but if you were looking to do a bill, either or, um, this is going to help you out. If you receive any value from this video today, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. Um, I chose all the parts in my PC. So I have a Ryzen 7 5800X. Um, I have a NZXT Kraken Z73 CPU cooler. Um, my motherboard is a Gigabyte X570 or some master. Um, I have 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory. Um, I have four hard drives in my system right now. One is an Inland 480 gigabyte SSD. I have a Samsung 970 Evo Plus. Um, I have a Western Digital SN 750 one terabyte NVMe. And then I have a gigabyte Oris NVMe Gen 4 one terabyte. Um, I have the Asus um, RTX 3080 Ti. Um, the Lee and Lee uh, PC 11 dynamic case. Um, of course, we just talked about the power supply, C Sonic Focus GX 850, 80 plus gold. Um, and then I have um, this is Bits Power uh, Touch Aqua. Um, and these are three packs. So I have a total of six of these RGB fans in my system. Um, I also have a Elgato capture card, but there's no way to be able to put that on here. Not that I know of. Don't pay attention to the price because this does not include the graphics card or these fans. Um, if it did, this would be like forty five hundred bucks. Um, and I know you're saying right now, man, that's a lot of stuff that you got in your system. I don't even have that much. <laughs> right. Um, but this is, you know, things get added over time. The longer you have your computer, the more you add to it. Right. Um, but. You know, for what I have, this is not far off from most people. I mean, most people don't have four hard drives. OK, so let's just take away maybe two of them. Right. Um, but if you take away two, most people have everything else, uh, especially if you have a Lee and Lee system, the more fans, the better. Um, so when we take a look at this, it says that the estimated wattage is six hundred and thirty nine watts. Hmm. Interesting, right? So the estimated wattage for this system is 639. So you'll probably say to yourself, man, I could just get me a 650 watt power supply and I'll be all right. Mm -mm. No, that's not right. <laughs> so let's take a look. I'm going to explain the reason why, but a lot of times people will also go to Newegg. Newegg has a power supply calculator. Um, so if we, I chose pretty much all of the components that they let you choose. So I chose the processor. 
Uh, it just says ATX motherboard here. It lets you choose the graphics card. Doesn't specifically say which model, uh, which is can really throw you off. Um, 16 gigabytes times two, which is 32. Um, 512 to one terabyte half times four. Uh, actually, this is, oh yeah, that's right. Um, and none of this, and it still comes out to 631 watts, uh, which is surprisingly. But when you do that, it will pull up power supplies on Newegg anywhere between 600 watts to 699 watts. Now, this is deceiving because it's not really giving you, it's going based off of the 631 watts, but that's not correct. And let me show you why that is not correct. So if we go down here, I'm going to show you this on Newegg's website as well. So it tells you the different stickers or the different ratings per se when it comes to power supply. So you have 80 plus gold, 80 plus platinum, 80 plus titanium, 80 plus bronze, 80 plus, just 80 plus, right? Which is the thermal take that I just showed you here. Um, and then 80 plus gold is the C-Sonic GX850. But here's something interesting. If you take a look here, 80 plus gold covers, uh, it says below 600 watts, 600 to 900, above 900. Platinum, below 700, 700 to 1,000, above 1,000. Titanium, below 1,200, and then 1,200 and above. And then so on and so forth. So what's funny about this is that, okay, hey, well, what's the difference in between these two? I'm glad you asked that question. If you receive any value from this video today, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell so you receive all my notifications. Um, so if we go to the site called WePC, um, they actually do a really, really good breakdown of the ratings. So if you take a look at this here, um, I'm just gonna put this in layman terms for you. So let's start off with the 80 plus or the actual 80 plus white, which is this right here. So if you see 80 plus white, then this will tell you, it talks about the actual rated load. So 10% load, 20% load, 50% load, and then at 100% load. So this 80 plus in the different ratings, um, it's all about efficiency. Uh, so efficiency means that no power supply will perform at 100% efficiency. <laughs> Does that make sense? So that means that you, the way that you calculate this is that based off of the percentages that we see here, uh, we will multiply that that percentage times whatever uh, wattage it is. So example, um, at 20 percent load, the 80 plus white is guaranteed to perform at 80 percent efficiency. So 80 percent. So if we were talking about 600 watts, right, let me get the calculator. Let me get the calculator. Uh, calculator. All right. So let's take a look here. So that means that 800, which is the wattage, I'm sorry, 600 watts, which is this, times 0.80, which is 80%. It's a little bit of math. So that means that this power supply efficiency wise, when it's at 20% load, 80%. That means that it's good as far as efficiency up to 480 watts. Well, I know you're saying to yourself right now, but it's a 600 watt power supply. I know. But performance wise, efficiency wise, at 20% load is good for 80%, which is 480 watts. At a 50% load is good for 80%, which is 480 watts. At 100% load is good for 80%, which is 480 watts. You get it? Kind of get where we're going? So you got the 80, you know, the 80 plus bronze at 20% load is good for 82% efficiency. At 50% load is good for 85%. And then at 100%, it's at good for 82% for bronze. Um, you really don't see silver. Um, I actually don't know why this is on here. They actually go from bronze to gold when you're looking for power supply. So 80 plus gold. So this is what I currently have in my system right now. This is the GX. This is the C-Sonic GX Focus. I'm sorry, GX850. This is the Focus. Um, so it's an 80 plus gold. So at 20% load, it gets 87% efficiency. So let's take a look at that. So 87, no, I'm sorry. 850 watts times 0. 0.8. 
87. So that means from an efficiency standpoint, when my Seasonic GX850, when it's at 20% load, it operates at 87%, which is, is good for up to 739 watts. Not bad. If we go back here, it says that my estimated wattage is 639 watts. All right. Okay. I feel good about that, right? Now, if we take a look at what it is at 50%, it actually goes up. So at 50%, it's at 90%. So pretty cool. So if we take 850 times 0.90, I'm good for 765 watts. And then when it's at 100% load, it's good for 87%, which is, you know, back to what we talked about earlier. So um, 850 times 0.87, 739 watts. Obviously, when you keep going, um, platinum, 90% at 20% load. Um, at 50%, 92% at 100% load, 89% efficiency. Then titanium is just great all across the board. 90% for the 20, actually 90% at 10% load, 92% at uh, 20% load, at 50% load, this is 94%. Uh, I'm going to tell you something significant about this, but we're going to come back to it. At 100% load is at 90%. So this is great. So the biggest thing about power supplies is one, knowing how much wattage your particular system can do. So for mines, Estimated 639. Now, this is an estimate. And I'm going to tell you why estimate is important. So, for AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, this is on Tech Power's website. It talks about power consumption. So, for my particular chip, uh, when it's idle, it consumes 49 watts. It has 105 watt TDP. Um, so, you know, when it's idle, it's pretty much like half you know, of what the TDP is. Um, power consumption on a single thread gets up to 76 watts. Single thread, you can kind of think about gaming uh, per se, that type of thing. Um, and then multi-thread, it could get up to 175 watts depending on your actual voltage and stuff like that. So, so if we peg the actual CPU out, uh, depending on the voltage that you have set up on your motherboard, it gets 175 watts. Now, I just said that the TDP was 105. Um, the TDP is a liar. <laughs> so if you plan on doing any type of work um, that would pretty much put your CPU at 100% load, uh, video editing, you know, so depending on what type of video editor that you're doing, um, you can be paid at 100%. Um, if you're playing games, you're playing at 1080p, it's going to use your actual CPU a lot more. Uh, it's not at 100%, uh, not with an 8-core, um, at least. Um, but you could be playing games. You could be streaming all at the same time, which puts a load on your system. Um, so it's a number of different things. Um, also, with my Seuss Rod Strix card, um, it says that TDP is 350 watts. It suggests a 750 watt PSU. Well, I'm going to show you why these numbers are not correct. So keep this in mind, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at Cinebench. I have open hardware monitor here. Uh, we have the clock speed, the temp, the load, and then the powers. And here where it says CPU package, that will give you the actual wattage, okay? So let's just start this. And something that you're going to see, we got 100% load. On center bench right here is my clock speed you'll see the temp now one thing i did to my chip um, i actually undervolted with pbo2 optimizer um phenomenal um that's something i may do a video on but it gets really really tricky you got to test out your system for a couple of weeks to make sure it's stable um but it works um i actually usually my max gpu temp um, you normally get maybe 76, 77, not GPU, but CPU temp normally gets around 76, 77, but this is hundred percent load. Um, I have this going, but if you can see right here, 
while running Cinebench at maxed out CPU. So eight cores, 16 threads. I'm at 120 watts. So I know the TDP. If I go back to the TDP, right? So Cinebench is still running. But if I take a look at CPU Z, the max TDP says 105, 105 watts. But as you can see, I'm at 120 watts. So you can see how the recommended wattage when you're looking at these different things could be deceiving. So the next thing I want to take a look at is actually real world situation for running the GPU and what can a wattage get up to. Let's take a look. OK, so here what we have is Far Cry 6 and this is the benchmark for Far Cry 6. Um, I'm using NVIDIA Shadowplay, um, but the most important thing is actually you see the 3080 Ti. Um, it said 1950 megahertz on the clock speed. But this right here, right next to it is the actual wattage. This is how much power the GPU is using right now. And it's pretty much averaging between, you know, 370, 375, 375 watts. I think is the max that I've seen, 375. And as you can see, my 5800X is around 76 to 70, well, 76 to 80, rather, 76 to 80 watts. So, you know, when you kind of add those two things together, you add those two things together, 375 plus 80 watts, it's 455 watts just from the CPU and GPU. So that's a real world situation that you can look at. And that's definitely something that I wanted you to see. OK, so now you know exactly what type of power supply and the wattage and stuff that you should get. Right. And if you already have a current system and you feel like you need to go back and make some changes and make some upgrades to your power supply, I would definitely do that. Um, I've always been a proponent of 850 watt power supplies, but I'm starting to think that it may not necessarily be enough. If I ever decided that I wanted to upgrade my graphics card to a 3090 or a 3090 Ti. Speaking of 3090 Ti, let's take a look at this. On videocars.com, they have an article that talks about a 3090 Ti. Now, I'm not going to get into the speculations on that <laughs> or even if this would ever come out. But if it did, they are talking about a TDP of 450 watts. Mind blown. And remember what we just learned about TDPs, you know, depending on the actual AIB model, aftermarket model, stuff like that, it could be higher. Right. So really, you know, thousand watt power supply, twelve hundred watt power supply. Not that far off. <laughs> so because if you have a graphics card that's pulling 450 to 500 watts by itself, um, then you still got to think about the rest of your system and doing overclocks and all this different type of stuff. So um, me personally, I plan on upgrading to a thousand watt power supply. Um, if you're getting a power supply, go with the goal, 80 plus goal. Um, so if you go with a thousand watt power supply, I would definitely go with an 80 plus platinum because that's what I'm going to get. Is if we're looking at platinum, uh, it says it here, 80 plus platinum at 20%, 90% efficiency, 92% efficiency when it comes to 50% load and 100% load, pretty much 90%. It's something I just noticed um, just off the back of my, you know, GX850. It says that... Um, it has a 90% efficiency rate at 50% system load. And so for gold, that's exactly what it shows here. So this website is really accurate. <laughs> so I tell you what, man. So, hey, I appreciate you for watching this video all the way through. Um, definitely don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and do all that good YouTube stuff to let YouTube uh, help a brother with the algorithm. So um, I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.